Jesus. I like how you wait for me now. <laughs> yeah, it's... Wait, I know why you wait for me. <laughs> what? Why would I, I, I wait? I didn't, th I didn't think this through. <laughs> hold on, hold on, guys. Mm -mm. Now, now you can't edit it out. And you died for me saying that. I'm sorry. I, I hate that so much. Like, I don't think I can put into words how much I hate that stupid phrase. Oh, trust me. I I can feel the the frustration and pure upsetness. If that's even a word of you of you every time I I say it. Like, I just from like the tone, I can tell your your groans are those are real groans. <laughs> it's so loud. <laughs> would you? I I've been we've talked about this many times, but would you be fine with it if I made it lower? It would still be obnoxious, but I would at least be able to tolerate it. Can I say, what's up, my fellow Jujuians? Would you allow this? We're not playing Attack with Power Juju anymore. I know. Kind of miss it already. That's how I feel about any game I, I beat, unless I really, really want to not play that game ever again or something. So, the best game ever that you're currently Let's Play? Woo! Mm. It's actually not that bad so far. Yeah. The HPO tag might not even be necessary. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll have HPO for the time being, so... It's it could, only it the could... first world. Yeah, I was about to say, it could escalate really fast. So... We're in warp room number three of Crash Bandicoot, the huge adventure, also known as XS, which means extra small, which means that both titles are actually just opposites of each other, which makes mm -hmm. absolutely no sense, but that's what they did because, you know, whatever. Um, and we have another polar bear section because I think these are in every single uh, ice section. And uh, they're all pretty fairly straightforward. I wouldn't say there's a very hard one. It only kind of gets really difficult uh, once you're doing the uh, relics. Um, but we won't be doing the relics for quite some time, but I think we're going to be doing the relics. Do you think we're going to be doing the relics eventually? Yeah, we're going to yeah. be doing the relics. Yeah, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> I kind of wanted to see how long I could sustain yeah. Oh, those are just obstacles? Yeah, I, I died on purpose because I missed the box and the giant didn't get it. I thought the I thought those were... Um, I thought they were supposed to have rollers. I mean, it would make sense. Maybe. It's 16 big game. Maybe they couldn't fit it. Why didn't they at least, like, texture it to be ice-themed? I guess they kind of did. Oh, they, they are. Well, they're snow-themed, but yeah. we're, in, we're in, like, an ice tunnel is the thing, I guess. Is what I'm thinking of, I suppose. I have died more in this one level than I have in the rest of the game combined. <laughs> what is the music here, by the way? Is it the Crash 2? Um, yeah, it's remixed, but yeah. Actually, I kind of want to hear it, because I haven't played this game in, like, uh, years, so... That same one again. Crash, a huge adventure, snow level music. Like, they did wanna... a pretty good job of remixing the songs, like, Entrance as well. They add their own riffs and everything. Oh my god, it actually, yeah, it is the song. Oh yeah, I forgot, they had a... They added a little, like, twangy instrument to it. That's the only thing I don't like about it. But they did this for, like, every single, uh... Crash game on the... Uh... I almost said DS. On the GBA. So, all two of them. That third one doesn't exist, you are just <laughs> misremembering. I still don't think it's that bad. I mean, yes, it's not good, but it's not... It's nothing in comparison. I'm actually... I don't hear that much either. I don't yeah, hate it, orange that much. It's not good, but I don't, I, I don't like orange, and I can absolutely see why nobody else likes it. It, it, it again, all the cutscenes like, yeah, or it. all the mini games, like six, seventy percent of the mini games are the same thing. That's my issue. And even when they're not the same thing, there's something kind of boring. Crash the Crash Purple. Oh shit. Crash Purple has... I just need my desk. I don't know if you heard that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> um, but Crash Purple has some boring games, but I feel like it has more redeeming games than it does boring games. So, I guess there's that. So I think it's just oh. the fact that they had the same developer on both of them. 
which is really strange because the developer is the developer that made the GBA Crash games, including this one. So of course the Crash game was going to turn out better. <laughs> like, of course. They could have made it a legit Crash game, but I think they did. I think they honestly opted not to because I think they didn't know how to properly make a Spyro game. That might be part of it. Like on a on a three or on a three DS. Oh my god! I don't even god. think like the actual GBA developers. I don't remember their name right now. I'm sorry, but I don't even think they really had it figured out. I mean, Attack of the Rhinoc is the best of the three. Yeah, it seems to be the generally agreed upon consensus, and I 100% agree. It's great. Yeah, it's a like, really solid game. Yeah, it's like if it was like an actually 3D game, I'm sure people would love it. But oh yeah, for sure. I would like it. I I don't. I would say it's not as good as the original trilogy, but I would say it's but like it's kind of cheating. <laughs> yeah, I would basically say honestly, it's probably like probably fourth in the series. No, maybe fifth. I think I like a Hero's Tale. I think a little better. I Which is weird. I know. Me. Huh? I think they're about equal for me. In fact, I might. Have, I don't know. I actually might put Attack the Rhinox over the original game. I could. I could see that. I think I feel like the thing that the original game really has going for it is the soundtrack and the aesthetic. Other than that, I feel like it's got it's the it's obviously the the lesser of the bunch. Um, and of course, Spyro Three. The only reason I don't like Spyro Three, and I don't think Spyro Three does anything better than Spyro Two, is it just like Crash Three. They try to put in gimmicks that really did not need to be there. I can't deny that, but they just don't bother me in 3 nearly as much as Crash. Maybe it's because it's a collect-on instead of a linear game. Yeah, I mean, I can understand that. It's just, I... The character swapping thing is, it's just dumb to me, and I feel like it wasn't done very well. Because I feel like the most flexible character of the bunch was Agent 9, and they only gave him... Like, he, I think he's the best of the characters because he has something different every time and it's something I feel is interesting for the most part. Like, in his main level, it's a 3D oh state. Oh my gosh, look at how many boxes are in this level. Holy <laughs> shite. I know this game, I know this game goes over 200. This actually is probably the first game to go over 200. I don't know if... Uh, I don't think Rath it ever happened again. I don't think... I don't know if Wrath of Cortex came out before this. I think it came out after it, but... Uh, this game was 2003, so Wrath of Cortex would have been earlier. Oh, uh, okay. So Wrath of Cortex was the first game to have 200 boxes. Because Gold Rush had 200-something, I think. Like a low 200. I think that was like the only stage in that game that had that many boxes. There might have been another, but I don't know. Wrath of Cortex is the epitome of gimmicks that really didn't need to exist. Yeah, you was giving Spyro 3 crap about that a minute ago. Um, Wrath of Cortex is high. I, I think the re main reason why I didn't think about it offhand is because I was more thinking of the original developers like Naughty Dog for the original Crash trilogy and CTR. And then, um, and then Insomniac for... Uh, the Spyro trilogy. Not that crap of lies again. Pretty sure I can't even do it yet, anyway. Yeah, I was about to say there might be two gems here. I wasn't paying attention enough to see it, but there probably is. There's usually one per warp room. I think that's kind of like a general rule of thumb. That goes for basically every single game from two onward. Even the first game, because the first game doesn't like you can't. You have to backtrack later on. Well, yeah. So, I think it's just the general rule of thumb for the Crash uh, franchise, I guess. I'm still listening to the ice level theme. Yeah, not even in that level anymore. I know. Hey, it's, it's a bop. I'm There's only one, in only one instrument that you can like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, how much do you want to guess is like explosive stuff, specifically nitro? So far, not a lot. There was two TNTs, and that's it. But we'll see. So far, still just two. I think the only game that ever got, like, a ton... I don't think three had a lot of crates in bonus rounds. 
That was a pretty mean crate. Oh, I know. Like, I knew it was there. That's the only reason I didn't fall for it. Um, but, uh, I think... So, we, I actually, I think we talked about this in the last part. Um, but we talked about, uh, I believe... Because we were, it was either this part or the last one we were talking about, just the, the crate inflation as a whole. Um, and then I think we we're talking about how the bonus rounds, how you know how they... Four. Four I, explosives. I, oh, Jesus. Uh, but yeah, I think there was like, um, I think we talked about, I said, I, I think Crash 3 was the only game that didn't have explosives. In, it did, but it did after you got the bazooka. Before you get the bazooka, I think it doesn't have it. Because I think what they did in Crash 3 was because they have a counter to show you how many boxes are in the, the bonus room as a whole. They would, they wouldn't put the, the like nitros in unless you could destroy them with like TNT or whatever, right? Um, until you got to the fourth, or I guess the fifth warp room, because then you have the bazooka and then oh, you can wow. destroy that it. other route had a bunch of them. I mean, I don't blame it to be honest. Yeah, those two. Second city. We'll go back once oh, we have look, all here's the, the green gem. Ooh. I wonder what you have to do here. Real mystery. Remember that one level in Crash 3 where you have to get the one colored gem? Yeah, I think it's it was the red gem. It's that, but worse. Potentially. Actually, I don't know how long I actually long think this one's a little bit better. If it's what one thing... Um, you don't have to go this far. It just reminded me. Um, remember how in the last warp room there was the water level and it only had like 20 boxes in it? Mm -hmm. So I went to the first part. This was like a few days after I think we recorded that. Um, I went to the first part to see what we had um, or what how many crates the first warp rooms uh underwater level hat because i was genuinely curious it had like 70 Look at here but now i gotta go back oh yeah this is actually way better i thought it was worse because i thought i i thought you had to go to the way end of the stage no nah, it's compared to crash 3 this is nothing yeah every, this doesn't really have any hazards you kind of got rid of all, all. yeah Crash 3 is just like hazards galore waiting for you. Man, Wrath of Cortex. There we go, I finally got a color gem. Wrath of Cortex is a good game. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not a fan, but I'll save that for when we get to it. It, okay. I, it, okay, I, I kind of, I take back my statement, because I can see why people would dislike it. So... Especially because there's a lot that I don't like. It's like you know, I mentioned before, like I'm not even that big a fan of Crash Three, and Wrath Cortex is Crash Three, <laughs> but the worst aspects are multiplied by ten. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> it's funny. It's actually funny. So I wasn't playing Enter the Dragonfly, but I saw a video on it not that long ago. Um, I didn't want to watch it though, and it's complete because I haven't played Enter the Dragonfly in a long time, um, and that's going to be one of my LPs uh, probably like two years from now. Maybe. Um, I guess you technically on... can do it next week. Who knows? Please don't do Heck, it next week. Technically, I could, but I, I think I think we agreed that I would let you finish the original trilogy first. Which I'm still waiting to see if they end up making a PC port for Reunited, which I'm like 90% sure they will. Especially after Crash Insane. Give them until summer. That's what I would think. I'll give them until the end of the year. You're, not, you're gonna keep us blue balled this long. How could you? But anyways, uh, I was actually looking at a video of um, Enter the Dragonfly. and I was actually really surprised at how good the levels look. It's been a while since I've seen their play at the game and I remember so many people chat on it, but it is a surprisingly good-looking game. Like, it's for the time and for, oh, like, yeah, for sure. and for the, the style of, like, the cartoony style they were going for, it's pretty good. Like, 
there are some stages like the honey level i don't i didn't see it in the video but i know that offhand that it is a nice looking level um and it's i and like i know the aesthetic and music and all that but for really just the second half of the game like honey yeah, second half. i i really like uh yeah i can see why cloud nine and or cloud 11 or whatever it's called it's cloud and, nine. and then i can see skip on a pun no. Um, but yeah, no, I can see why people would think like the Dragon Dojo isn't really the best looking level or... Yeah, that one's not... Or, I'd say really just the first three are really dull. AK, Cloud9... Cloud9's not uh, one of the first three. It's number four, though. The first... Well, the first one... Hold on. The first one is the Dragon's Dojo. The second, second one, one is, is, the, is the, the farm. Park country. And then there's the, the Lua Island or whatever it's called. The island level. I think I think Lou Island looks surprisingly good. I think it uh, effectively accomplishes what it was going out for. I guess that's fair. It's just it's what it was if going any, out for. It isn't really that anything, pleasing. If anything, I would put the the ice level in the realm of one of the more boring ones. No, that would be a top tier one for me. I don't remember Not it though very top, well, but. I think my We're favorite. We're talking about Spyro to the Dragonfly, though, so uh, mileage varies. I feel like my favorite are either the Honey level, the Volcano level, or Thieves Den. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, like the last chunk of the game. Yeah, I want to say the Honey level. The honey, I think the Honey level actually looks really nice. It literally, it basically looks like an updated Honey Speedway. Which I think was the point. Yeah. And I think Honey Speedway was probably one of the better looking levels in Spyro 3 as a whole, so. And I like how we're playing the Crash game, yet we're talking about Spyro. God damn it, me. Yeah, some habits are never gonna die, are they? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, they're from similar devs and that really were really. Don't know. Like, back then, I can say they were similar. Nowadays, no. Now Somniac has stayed fairly similar, but Naughty Dog completely changed. That's because the co- uh, the f not the co-founders, the founders left. Yeah. I mean, there can be a reason for it, but they still changed. If I honestly had a guess, I'd want to say it's creative differences. I wouldn't doubt it. When did that they makes... leave? I want to say it was like legit like 2006 or something. Like it, it was like a long sounds very time. accurate. <laughs> Like it true. sounds very be like long just ago. before Uncharted came out. And if that doesn't sound like exactly when they would have left. Let me actually Google Naughty Dog. Oh, dude, careers? I want to work for them. How do I work for you, Naughty Dog? They've got animation open, IT. They got art. They have UI scripters. They got lighting and visual effects, game design. Dude, I want to be... Gameplay scripter? Oh, I want to script gameplay. Level slash environment design? Oh, dude, I wonder what they're making. Uh, last is part two, aren't they? Oh, uh, yeah. I want to I wanna apply. What do I need to be able to be a level slash environment? Mm, just to checkpoints. Oh, I have to model things. Wait, simplified geometry. Uh, how simplified are we talking? <laughs> I think you might want to elaborate there, guys. <laughs> I don't understand think you understand this... how simple he can go. Uh, I need to understand a whole bunch of different, at least to a simple degree. I need to understand C sharp, uh, uh, Lua, Java, or Python. Okay, I thought it was all of those. Okay, but if it's only one of them. Well, I mean, if you know one programming language, you can pick up the other ones. Fairly simple. Yeah. Proficient and effective at communication skills. Dude, that's me. I'm good at communicating with people. Welcomes criticism and collaborates. Dude, I love criticism because I just call everything that I make terrible. So that way, when somebody criticizes me, I can be like, yeah, it fucking sucks. But, uh, enough looking at this. 
preferred three plus years designing and scripting single player levels for console games. You know, that's that's a hard department to get into as a whole. You have to go. You have to, you'd have to be indie first. But I feel like if you're gonna or be indie another, first, you're gonna oh, have to lose a life. I feel like if you're gonna be indie though, you're gonna stay indie. <laughs> Especially if you have success. Yeah, like I, I really can't see Toby Fox going to ask to work at Naughty Dog. Sorry. <laughs> Toby Fox comes in. Hey guys, I would like to play or help you guys make The Last of Us Two. Sansa's Nest. <laughs> Sorry. That is so outdated. <laughs> uh, I made the same mistake twice. Anyways, Naughty Dog. Let's see. Um, not the key people. Founders. Andy Gavin and Jason Rubin. Jason Rubin left in 2004. That actually sounds even more accurate. <laughs> So that would have been and right then, after Jack 3 came out. And then he was the, uh, oh my goodness, he was the uh, president of THQ from 2012 to 2013. Oh, well, that's that's awkward. <laughs> Bless your soul. That's, that's unfortunate. Um, and Andy Gavin, oh, he currently, by the way, Jason, uh, Jason Rubin works, uh, he's an employer at Oculus VR. <laughs> Don't think I didn't hear that little slip up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I didn't want to bring more light to it. Ah, uh, not this fucking running shit again. Uh. Anyways, Andy Gavin, I think he left along with, yeah, 2004. They were like best friends. So... Like, yeah, then we, we made a crash, we made Jack, we made a few other games that nobody really cares about. That's good enough! Uh, he currently works at Maker Studios slash Disney Digital Network. What are they making now? Like, I actually don't remember that company at all. That is a good question. Um, I know they're an MCN. What are they doing? Like, didn't MCNs just have a, like, a massive dr dry spell that's still going on and... This is Disney, though. Yeah, but MCN. Good question. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, what are they doing is Dis Disney Digital Network. So I guess that's what they're technically basically called now. Uh, in January 2019, or... 19th, 2018, Twitch signed a deal with Disney to secure exclusive content. Okay. Uh, e exclusive content from the entertainment giant's top YouTubers, including Toby Turner. What? I thought by that time he was done. Markiplier and Jack Septic. I mean, that makes more sense. <laughs> Wait, who? Markiplier and Jack Septic. Oh. But apparently they made a deal. Apparently Toby Turner in January 19th of 2018 was considered a giant still. I thought that was... This was like well after those allegation stuff was going on. Yeah. So... I mean, which, he's still making videos for what it's worth. I, I know, he, he, he changed... I, from from what it seems like, too, the allegations were completely totally... they were completely made up, from what I can tell. Yeah, yeah, from what I can tell, they seem like they were completely made up, and he got fucked. He got fucked. Yeah, that seems to be the general consensus. I mean, because the problem what... is, too, like a lot of people just didn't really like his content that much anymore. Like, what worked in twenty ten didn't really work in twenty seventeen, and yeah, but he lost his whole career, man. It's a, I'm not saying it's fair, or that it doesn't suck, but... I wonder how he even started making, like, a livelihood afterwards. I imagine he has to have a side job. Either that, or he has a really determined fan base that's just off their side. Apparently... Oh, wait, no, never mind. Oh. Wait. I'm gonna actually look at the... 
Jason Rubin thing. I want to see when he left Naughty Dog. I want to see if it states why. Um, he did work with them on Jack X. Which, I mean, that was still in 2005. Yeah. That was a year after his, like, formal leave. Um... He made a controversial he made a controversial speech at 2004 Dice Summit that criticized publishers for not recognizing and promoting talent responsible for creating games. That's That's not even wrong though. Not especially wrong. back then. Yeah, that is not wrong at all. What? What's controversial about that? Ruben publicly announced his departure from Naughty Dog. That must have been another reason why he was pissed. Yeah. He probably wanted to, he probably wanted to split ties with Sony. Uh, yeah, that's that that's could, one that way would make be. sense to me. That, then that's they one wanted way. to run THQ of all companies. Like I hate publishers. Let's go work for a publisher. <laughs> yeah, but that was like eight years after. In the absolute darkest times of that company, <laughs> like. Uh... To be fair, THQ wasn't as bad as. So many other companies at the time. Sure, I guess, but they still more or less went. No, not more or less. They did go under. Yeah, they got they got destroyed. They got he he was president when they were bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> though I, I though THQ shutting down was like sad for so many people. I feel like if EA shut oh, down, yeah. nobody would give a shit. <laughs> people would cheer. Are you kidding? <laughs> like, they, they would just expect that all those IPs would just get bought out. Like, what, do you think Star Wars is going to go away because EA does? No. no. Of course not. As a matter of fact, we don't even know if they're going to be able to make any more Star Wars related shit. They will, I'm sure. CA. Yeah, but Disney got pissed. They were pissed with the whole loot box thing. They were only mad because it was controversial, kind of though. Yeah, but being like you can't you can't have them in bad light you can't have disney in bad light and on top of that i think part of it too is because the, the movie was involved well i mean they were supposed to like coincide a bit because it I like, really like, like the, the, the 16-bit rendition of tiny scenes really nice like i don't mention the music that much but like it's actually really good which tiny theme I want to say Scratch 3, but it's kind of hard to tell. Whichever one sounds more spacey is the one from <laughs> the second game. Tornado Spin! Do you just get these in the same order as Crash 3? Yeah, just you don't have the bazooka, although the bazooka would be disgustingly broken in this game, so I understand. Is it this, uh, is the is super the, slide in this game, or what are no, they... No, that was entranced. Yeah, what do they replace it with? Nothing, um, it's just... that's it. <laughs> Do you just not get anything? Do you just get the running shoes early? You get it for beating Cortex. There's only one warp room left. Wait, there's four warp rooms? Yeah. Remember last time when we finished the boss? I was like, congratulations, Crash, you're halfway there. Oh my god, you're right. Oh. <clears throat> and yeah, this is you. Cortex, I knew this would happen. Crash has defeated three of your stooges. He must be stopped. I will not tolerate another failure. I feel like this is just the intro again. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh God. I'm sorry. However, do not be overly concerned. My planetary minimizer will stop him. Dude, just smash him. Squash him. Yeah. Well, why don't you just put your thumb over Australia? Like, I doubt he really cares about casualties. Well, I forgot this game is actually smaller than I thought it was. But yeah, this is it. Like once we clear these up, that's all of them. There's is only there four even a bonus? Attempts too. Is there a bonus warp room? Nope. There's a bonus boss, but that's it. Yeah, I figured that much. This is the space flying battle. I would know. But yeah, that's that's it for this video. Um, yeah, this is the last part of this LP. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. Yeah, see you in our next LP of Crash Bandicoot. Excess, goodbye.